you remember, 2013 was a hell of an adoption cycle. It was the initial one, and it had some violent moves. It's kind of suggesting violent moves. You know, just by using that chart, it gets me somewhere like 300,000 Bitcoin price range. Okay, that's above most people's expectations, but I don't see any reason why the chart's not going to work. And we'll come a bit more about how this cycle plays out in a sec. But the other killer chart is once I start discovering Metcalfe's law, I start realizing that Ethereum's exactly following Bitcoin's last cycle. And it's like, oh my God, this is spooky. I mean, I've got action on my Bloomberg in real time and it almost works tick for tick. I've never seen anything like it. And that gives a cycle projection for Ethereum of 20,000. And again, I actually think it's going to overshoot. My logic about Metcalfe's law is right. These layer ones that we'll talk about later should also fit. And bizarrely, here's the chart of Solana against Ethereum in the last cycle. When Ethereum was the darling, the new breakthrough, it's exactly following. And the same is true of Terra. It's exactly following. It's like, so as these different protocols get adoption, they're all behaving in the same way. While Bitcoin is repeating its early cycle of massive adoption. So for me, this is super interesting. And again, I don't expect these to be perfect, but they're contextualizing network adoption, which is, I think, everything in this space for the time being until we start moving into some of the other things. How do I think this plays out? Because that's what everybody cares about. I honestly think we're going to have a ridiculous year end. Here's the rub, is we've got different people, actors in the business now. So if you are BlackRock or you are Tudor and you have Bitcoin at end of year, if you are BlackRock, and let's say I'm right and Bitcoin goes up 4x into the end of year or 3x, you are going to rebalance and sell some Bitcoin. If you are Tudor, you come into the end of the year, you want to lock in your gains because you get paid your annual performance fee in January, so you will probably flatten out your PL. So what happens is we might see selling towards the end of December, which the market is going to go, the cycle's finished, because everybody's kind of expecting a December end because it was 2013 and 2017 where the Bitcoin cycle ended in December. However, I think the structure has changed. I think there's a couple of things going on that will elongate the cycle. One is everybody is onboarding. The more the price goes up, the more the institutions onboard. Institutions are weird beasts. They tend to operate quarterly. So you come into January, everybody who's got approval is going to start onboarding and allocating January, February, March. Sell off from the rebalancing will be bought by the new institutions entering the space as they increase their allocations. Additionally, hedge funds have a brand new P&L January 1st. And what they like to do is put on risk. And this will be the bet that they'll put on. So my guess is we see more of that and that drives prices further than we expect. I'm kind of thinking that is a probability, a reasonable probability, call it a 30, 40% chance that Ethereum gets to 40,000 and Bitcoin whether it gets to 300 or 400, I don't know. And there's even an up chance of more. I think we've got a spot ETF that comes in the middle of that and probably an Ethereum ETF that comes. Then we've got the other big game in town, which is the fact that Ethereum has no supply. There's about 10 or 11% of all available Ethereum on exchanges. Everything else is locked away in smart contracts, cold storage, you know, DeFi, NFTs, and then staking. Because everybody wants the 2.0 to come, so everybody's staking their ETH for the yield. And that takes it off and locks it away until after that. And then that ETH comes onto the market gradually. So I think the cycle probably goes on till the summer. I think almost certainly till March, but possibly to the summer, which will give us higher prices and a different cycle structure than we've seen before. I could be wrong. I'm not betting the entire ranch on it, but that's how I think it plays out. If I'm right about the network adoption, then these other layer ones like Solana, Terra, Avalanche, Kidana, and some of the others are going to be super explosive. But in a risk reward basis, they're riskier. They're not as deep a network as Ethereum is. Ethereum to me remains the best bet in the world from a risk adju adjusted standpoint. It may not do the most in price of all, but for a major asset, my guess is it gets pretty close to Bitcoin's market cap. So I think it probably in the end somewhere doubles relative valuation versus Bitcoin. I don't think the market quite expects that, but maybe that kind of short period of the flippening would be the end of the cycle when, you know, everybody punches the air, all the, you know, the Bitcoin guys get pissed off because, you know, Ethereum's outperformed and then we, we get a larger correction. 
Uh, this whole show, Rails Adventures in Crypto, is basically my learning journey. I am learning along with everybody else, and I'm taking everybody with me. There are no answers here. This is not like the macro world where you kind of know how things work, and it's deciding which way it's going to go. Is it this path or that path? This is like, it's an unknown future, and we all have to figure it out while sprinting a marathon. So it's immensely hard work, incredible amounts of input of new information coming that it's overwhelming us all. So what I'm trying to do is build this framework in my head that allows me to take into account all the things that are happening without having to be an expert on all of them. And I want to be an expert on some of them. That's how I'm approaching it. Um, it's impossible to be an expert on everything. And anybody who tries will just die of overwork. So the best thing is that. So what am I looking at? Let's start first with this is the fastest adoption of any technology in all recorded history. The chart you can see on the screen now shows that the internet back in 1997, when it had 150 million users, was growing at 63% a year. 150 million users in crypto is present day, and it's growing at 113% a year. So this is why it's so hard for us all to catch up, because it's growing at a ridiculous pace. It's only accelerating. I mean, we've seen in the last year alone, the rise of DeFi, NFTs, DAOs, central bank digital currencies, um, stable coins, in a way that none of us could have expected. It's just happened so fast at such scale, and that's only going to continue. And that's a core philosophy of the exponential age. How I look at this to frame it simply is, this is currently a two and a half trillion dollar asset class. If you compare the other asset classes, they're between 150 and 300 trillion until you get to derivatives, which are one quadrillion. And then when you get to FX, it's multiple quadrillions. The reality is if we continue this rate of adoption, we should get to an equivalent size asset class in these digital assets. And that would make them worth 200 trillion. We have never in all of human history been given an opportunity that an entire asset class, not a stock, not a single token, an entire asset class goes up 100x in value, probably by the end of this decade. So if I've talked about before, this is, I think, the largest distribution of wealth and fastest distribution of wealth in all recorded history. Because unlike most other wealth distributions, things like railroads, phones, even computers, and even the internet, they accrue to giant companies. This is accruing to tokens which anybody can participate in because you can own a fraction of a token. You can own a small fraction. You can have $10 in it. So everybody can participate in this, right? This is incredible. And this is why I'm so passionate about this space is I was driven on a mission after 2008 and 2012, the European crisis, to tell people about the risks and opportunities. I didn't want somebody to come to me and said, why didn't I know? My job, the whole job of Real Vision is to make sure everybody knows. So I've been banging the table as loudly as possible saying, look, there are no certainties in this world, but this is the highest probability opportunity I've ever seen and the biggest magnitude of any opportunity I've ever seen in my entire career or I've ever heard about. That's the scale. And that's why I am crazy interested in this. I have been following Metcalfe's law as my guide for this. Metcalfe's law is about how do you value a network? And it's about basically the number of people on the network plus the number of connections between those people. And the more connections and the more applications built on top of those people, the more valuable it is. The biggest network is currently Bitcoin. Bitcoin has less applications built on it than Ethereum does, but it has more users. It's immensely valuable. It has the store of value proposition that most people are familiar with. What is interesting is adoption effects seem to repeat themselves. They say it seems to be a human behavioral thing. So if you look at this next chart, Bitcoin now is basically exactly following Bitcoin 2013 in price structure. It's weird. And this is not a chart I've just pulled up today. I've been following this for a year and a half once I first started discovering Metcalfe's Law. And I'm like, bloody hell, this is weird. But it gives you a rough idea. I don't expect it to be perfect, but it gives you a rough idea. And what I'm expecting is a gigantic rally into year end. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70. In the traditional financial system, 
and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin. It went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.